Okay, let's see. This last section in Chapter 5 um, is really a, a kind of a technique of integration. And we're going to spend a lot of time on that this quarter when we get to Chapter 7. But um, this is called the substitution rule. Very useful. Uh, you know, when you look at the antiderivative or the indefinite integral of x to the fifth dx, all you have to do is uh, look at any antiderivative of this and uh, add c to it so it becomes x to the sixth over six plus c. But we really can't do that with with two uh, x minus three to the fifth. We don't have a rule that applies here. So what we do is we we make a substitution. We let u. It doesn't have to be u. We usually use u, but if we let u be this thing, two x minus three, then we'll have u to the fifth. But you have to make a substitution for all of it. See this different differential x. Um, the definition. You might want to go back to section three point ten and look at that. But the definition of a diff differential. The differential of u is equal to u prime of x times the differential of x. So du, the differential of u, is equal to the derivative of u with respect to x, which is 2, times dx. And in other words, what I'm getting at is you have to, to substitute for everything. So, <clears throat> so if you substitute for dx, doesn't dx equal du over 2? So when you go back to the in integral here, this, this uh, indefinite inter integral can be thought of as u to the fifth, and then when you substitute for dx, you get du over 2. So uh, what you can do then is factor out the 1 half, and look what you have. The indefinite integral of u to the fifth du, or the general antiderivative of u to the fifth du, you get u to the sixth over six plus c. Now, um, usually we don't leave our answer like that. We're always going to want to go back to x. So at the very end, substitute back what, what u is. u is equal to 2x minus 3. So this is the answer. If you wanted to, you could check. You could, you could differen differentiate this, and you should get um, 2x minus 3 to the fifth. Try it. Anyway, um, uh, let's look at this one. We don't know how to find the antiderivative of the square root of 3x minus 5. We do know how to find the antiderivative of the square root of x. So again, you make a substitution. If u equals 3x minus 5, then you have to substitute for dx also. So definition of differentials in 3.10 the differential of u is, is equal to u prime of x, which is 3, times the differential of x. So when you solve this for the differential of x dx, you get du over 3, so put that in for dx. Move the 1 third out, and then what, what is the antiderivative, what is the indefinite integral of u to the 1 half? It's u to the 3 halves over 3 halves, you get a 2 thirds there. So your final answer, when you plug it back in terms of x, you get 2 ninths, the quantity 3x minus 5 to the, to the 3 halves plus c. Okay, some of these some of these can get kind of sneaky. You look at this one, you go, I don't know what to do there. Well, just try something. Uh, if you let u equal, I mean, I don't know what's that x squared going on there. I don't I don't know what to do with that. Well, just try something. Maybe it's all rigged. Do you think? If u equals x cubed plus one, makes sense. It's a reasonable one to choose. Then what is the differential of u? Du. It would be three x squared dx. Well, look, you have x squared dx right here. So why don't you solve this not for dx, but solve it for x squared dx. When you divide by 3, you can replace x squared dx with du over 3. So if, if you think if this is rigged, you're, you're right. Uh, if you didn't have that x squared there, you might not be able to do this problem this way. You'd move the 1 third out, and then you'd integ integrate uh, u to the 1 half. You get u to the 3 halves. 2 thirds u to the 3 halves plus c. Make sure you substitute back in terms of x. Pretty slick, huh? Uh, there might be more than one way to do some of these, but anyway, look look at this one. What's the antiderivative of cosine square root of x over square root of x? Try something. Let's let's let u equal square root of x. Makes sense, because then you have cosine u. Hopefully, this is your du here. Uh, what is the differential of u? The differential of u is the derivative of u with respect to x, which is one over two square root of x times the differential of x. So you have dx over x, so solve this for dx over square root of x. So dx over square root of x becomes 2 du, and you can plug it in. Bingo. You, you can work with this. Factor the 2 out. The antiderivative of cosine u is sine u. Don't forget the plus c. 
So then you go back in terms of x at the very end. Write your answer in terms of x. There it is. Uh, try this one. See if you do number 6 on your own. See if you can find the antiderivative of uh, natural log of x over x dx. Okay, you have a choice here. If you let u equal the natural log of x, then the differential of u is 1 over x, 1 over x times the differential of x. And look, in other words, it's dx over x, which is exactly what you have here. So believe it or not, this just becomes u du. Isn't that amazing? Which becomes u squared over 2 plus c, and don't forget to substitute back in terms of the natural log of x. Try this one. Okay, I would suggest letting u equal cosine of x, and then the differential of u, du, is um, negative sine x dx, and you just happen to have sine x dx on the top, so you get sine x dx is negative du. So with that substitution, you end up with this. So you end up, factor out the negative 1, and, you, and the integral of, the indefinite integral of u to the negative 2 is u to the negative 1 over negative 1, so your final answer would be 1 over u plus c, which could be written as 1 over cosine of x plus c, which is the same as thing as secant x plus c. Either one of these is fine. All right, try this one. See if you can do this one. Okay, you can let u equal e to the x, or u equal e to the x plus 1. I think u equal e to the x plus 1. How do you know what to do? Well, I think what you do is you just try something. If it doesn't work, try something else, but don't give up. This one works because the differential of u, du, would be the derivative of u with respect to x, which is e to the x times dx, and there's what you have on the top. So this becomes du over u, which is the natural log absolute value of u, plus c. But u equals e to the x plus 1. We don't need the absolute values around here anymore because isn't the absolute value of e to the x plus, isn't e to the x plus 1 always positive? So you can just drop the absolute values. There's your answer. All right, now when, when you have a definite integral, up till now we've just been looking at indefinite integrals. When you have a definite integral and you make a u substitution, uh, there's two ways to go. I would suggest practicing switching the limits of integration as well. So let me show you how I'd suggest you do it. Um, if you let u equal 3x minus 2, which seems like a reasonable thing to do, and the differential of u, du, is the derivative of u with respect to x times dx, so it's 3dx, so you get dx is du over 3. As, as long as we're, we're, we're switching things, look at this. When x is 0, we're, we're, this is a dx integration. When x is 0, what is u? When you plug in 0 for x, isn't, when x is 0, isn't u negative 2? So you'd make this bottom limit negative 2. And when x is uh, 1, the top limit, what is u? When x is 1, u would be 1, wouldn't it? So it, it, you can switch these limits of integration as well. That way you don't have to worry about switching back. You can just finish this problem, see? So switch the limits of integration, too. Move out the one-third, and you get u to the 6 over 6, and you evaluate it between negative 2 and 1. So you get 1 18th, 1 minus, um, let's see, what is negative 2 to the 6? Is it 64, I think? So you get negative 63 over 18. All right, we've got time for one more. Let's see, why don't you try this one on your own? See if you can do this one. See if you can uh, evaluate this definite integral. Actually, this one is really kind of sneaky. What are you going to let u equal? Uh, a good attempt would be u equal x plus 1, but here's the trick. du, the differential of u, is the derivative of u with respect to x, which is just 1 times dx, right? So du equals dx, but then what do you do about that x there? See? This becomes u to the one-half du, but what about that extra x? Well, the way you get rid of that extra x is if u equals x plus 1, doesn't x equal u minus 1? So you have to substitute for x, you have to put a u, u minus 1 there. So you get u minus 1 for x, u to the one-half du. Now, let's look at the limits of integration here. When x is 0, since u equals x plus 1, since u equals x plus 1, when x is 0, u is 1. And when x equals 1, u is 2. So the switch limits of integration look like that. Anyway, when you finish this, this problem, it comes out really messy. You can take a look at that. All right. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.